Today's Jeep Talk Show is sponsored in part by Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts. For over 20 years, Tom Woods has been providing the off-road industry with some of the strongest, most durable driveline upgrades there are. If you're in the need for the world's best under your own Jeep, well, stay tuned later in the show to find out how you can get 10% off between, on your order between now and the end of July. Until then, head over to www.4xshaft.com to start upgrading your Jeep now. Oh, hey, and check that purchase out when it arrives for a shiny new Jeep Talk Show sticker. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Are you ready? It's the G Talk Show with G Mama, Josh, and Tony. So sit back, strap in, and, and brace yourself. yourself. Well, Tony, how did it feel experiencing being a real Jeeper this weekend mm-hmm. and breaking down on the trail? <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, it turns out some trail repairs aren't quite as bad as I thought they would be. Oh, man, Tony, that doesn't sound like fun. What happened? Well, Tammy, I'm glad you asked, but you're going to have to wait until we get around to the campfire side chat uh-huh. later in the show before uh-huh. I tell you. See what I did there? Uh-huh. See what I did? I don't, I don't want to wait. <laughs> Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. And This Week in Jeep is brought to you by Amazon.com. Need that critical Jeep part like yesterday? Well, perhaps you can't wait for your co-host to spill the beans. Well, maybe you're impatient like I am and crave that instant gratification. Well, if you've missed Amazon's Prime Day this week, you can still get a great deal on the things you need and want, and you can get it lightning fast all while supporting the show. The next time you need or want something, just click on the Amazon button on our website or go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon, and anything you purchase will have a small percentage donated to the Jeep Talk Show. That's jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. And thanks in advance. Well, she has been found. Last week, we reported it that just days after the call went out, the Jeep Talk Show and national news organizations alike put the word out about a Portland, Oregon woman who went missing in her Jeep on her way down to California to visit family. Seven days later, she was found. Last Friday, two people spotted the crash scene as they were looking for a new place to fish, and they called 911. We saw a bumper first, and we were like, look, there's a bumper. That's weird. And then we came around another bend, and we saw the car, said Chelsea Moore. Chelsea and Chad Moore said that they heard Hernandez, but at first they thought she was just another camper. We turned around and Angela was right there in the rocks. She just looked like hell, but she was happy at the, t- at the same time. She was really, really happy to see us. We asked her, were you in the Jeep? And she said, that was my Jeep, Chad Moore said. On Facebook, Hernandez said she swerved to avoid a small animal on the road before losing control of her Jeep and crashing off the 250-foot cliff. She wrote that she could only remember waking up in the Jeep with the water rising over her knees. My head hurt, and when I touched it, I found blood on my hands. My car's power was off by then, and every window was closed, Hernandez said. The Jeep was nearly unrecognizable. Parts were everywhere, and it was that which likely saved her life. Hernandez says she used a hose that fell from her car and used it to collect water dripping from a patch of moss nearby to stay alive. However, some news agencies got this completely wrong and reported as she was drinking from the radiator itself, (laughs) and as we all know, that would have killed her. Shame. (laughs) She described searching the shore daily and yelling up the cliff for help every single day before help finally came seven days later on Friday. Hernandez finished her Facebook post by writing three simple words. Life is incredible. And I think I speak from all of us here at the Jeep Talk Show when I say I couldn't agree more. So um, there was a rumor that the 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 people that were that found her and ultimately uh, rescued or were instrumental in rescuing her, um, that they made her sign a waiver not to give away their fishing location. Oh, jeez, Tony! <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a, this, uh, is a, this is a good spot. You up the, before we pull you up the cliff, I need you to sign this NDA here yeah, real quick. That's yeah, right, because be I don't want anybody else fishing around right here. Because we just found this place, and it's really good. Well, you know, I can't tell you uh, how happy I was to hear that this turned out this way. Uh, in fact, I believe I sent you guys a, a message because we had just reported on this uh, when right. they found her. So, uh, yeah, that's right. And if you guys have seen the pictures, now I included a, a couple of pics in the show notes um, uh, here just you know, for us here while we do the show so you guys can see the severity of this crash. It is a miracle 
that that not only she is alive, but th- that she was able to walk away from her Jeep swerving off of a 250 foot cliff and crashing into the rocks down near the basically at the ocean. I mean, her Jeep was, for all intents and purposes, at high tide, partially submerged. So, I mean, the fact that she was not only able to get herself out, but had the wherewithal to know what she needed to survive and did whatever was necessary to make that happen. Now, obviously, she's been watching a little bit of Bear Grylls, understood that, hey, a little bit of fresh water off that moss is going to make all the difference in the world. Yeah, that was smart. and that really was smart. I, I wouldn't doubt that we're going to see a movie from this. At the very least, there's going to be a book that comes out about this. This is an incredible story and and one that has to be told. And I, I'm just so grateful that not only we were able to get the word out here on the show, but the fact that, that she was able to be found and found alive and healthy. You know, if they do make a movie, I think Polly Shore is the small animal that she dodges that we're going <laughs> off over the cliff would be would be perfect. It'd be a great career path for him to come on back, you know. Out in the middle of the road. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy does shaking her head. I'm just, just yeah, getting man. disapproval all the time from Tammy. <laughs> well, here's an incredible way of doing things. Maybe not the right way, but nonetheless. So the roof rack weight limit on a Jeep Liberty is roughly, I don't know, about 150 pounds or so. Just about enough for, you know, a fair amount of camping gear, maybe, you know, snowboards, skis, that sort of stuff, bikes, kayaks, maybe even one of those like cargo carrier things. Not so good for things like Uncle Bob, full-size grown man with too much liquid courage, (laughs) nor is the anemic roof rack rated to carry full-size appliances. Now, we've all seen those pictures online of a little third-world guy on a motorcycle carrying a quarter ton of bricks and a 20-foot ladder all on a moped pulled by a donkey. But that shouldn't be the inspiration for how a person planned on getting a front-load washing machine home from the store. When I saw the picture of what this Jeep owner did, I was flooded by a mishmash of emotions. First, there was confusion. I I really had no idea what the hell I was looking at. Then I was in denial. There's no way that I'm seeing what I am seeing here. Then I was both shocked and impressed at the same time, but then that dissolved into a morbid curiosity. For what I was seeing was a full-sized washing machine strapped not to the cargo rack of this little Jeep, but to the hood. Now, apparently, one Texas Jeep owner thought this to be a good idea. Now, I will give them some credit as they doubled up on the moving blankets that were protecting the paint (laughs) job and were using appropriate sized hold down straps to secure the load. Never mind that virtually the entire windshield is covered by the width of this appliance and that there is no way the person could have driven that Jeep down the road without hanging their head out the window like a slobbering dog. The Abilene, Texas Police Officers Association posted a photo of the vehicle parked at a gas station on Facebook with the caption, Job security for us. <laughs> Comments on the post included another photo of what appears to be the same Jeep with a different appliance strapped to, you guessed it, right on the hood. And other pictures showed more of this insane cargo carrying technique along with a comically full roof rack. Another commenter claimed that he's also seen this Jeep owner do this several times before in the past. One person alleged this guy is a metal scrapper who lost his trailer. Regardless of what this guy is smoking, Driving with an obstructed view, especially one of this nature, is against the law in Texas and carries a $60 fine in Aber- Aberdeen. Or, uh, uh, Abilene. Abilene, yeah. Uh, yeah, according to reports, though, the driver got off without a ticket. That's because the original image wasn't taken by an officer that spotted him, but was sent to the police by a concerned citizen, which I guess is somehow different. Whatever. A department spokesperson uh, said that the owner of the Jeep was located at his home and given a verbal warning not to do it again. (laughs) While installing the washing machine. (laughs) Oh, you mean I can't do it like this? (laughs) This is just ridiculous. Now, I've I've got a picture in the the show notes for my co-host here of literally a Jeep Liberty with a full-size washing machine strapped to the hood of it. It just boggles my mind where some people get this ingenuity from. It's just just stunning. Would I, would I be inappropriate in pointing out that this is a black Jeep? Yes, it would be inappropriate. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm just checking. It could be, it could totally be navy blue. I won't, I won't mention it then. <laughs> it could be navy blue. Maybe dark green. I don't know. Yeah, it's blue. <laughs> it could be. A, you know what? It actually could be a dark green because my coworker <laughs> just bought a new truck. And I swear to God, it was black. But let's, if you get up really close, it's green. Let's let's offend a lot of Jeeps. Let's keep yes. throwing colors out there. 
I was talking about truck colors, not Jeep colors. I, I'm, I'm really hoping that the, the person who is driving this vehicle or maybe even one of the officers uh, in, in this police association are listening to the show. We would love to talk to any one of you guys about oh, this. Yeah. And I'm, hey, if, you, if you're the one who's doing this, we'd love to hear the explanation of how you got that washing machine up on the, the hood of your Jeep without crushing it. And, and two, I mean... Just how long have you been doing this? So, yeah, really some amazing stuff. I mean, it, it there's, you know, there's, uh, it takes all kinds. I'll that, just that's, that. that's a funny story. I'm glad you found that one. That's, uh, that's a good one. Well, hey, if you guys have a news tip or response to any one of our stories, make sure to let us know by phone or by email. We'd love to hear from you. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out how. Hey guys, and coming up later in the show, we have an interview with Jason Cook from Planet JP. Did you know that Jeep Talk Show News is available on your Amazon Echo? Catch up with the show as you get ready for work. Just add Jeep Talk Show News to your flash briefing. Coming up in Tech Talk, cheap upgrade to your Chrysler 8 and a quarter. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Now we sure would like you guys to go check out the 4x4 Radio Network website. If you haven't been there recently, we'll go check it out. Next time you're online, just pop over to 4x4radionetwork.com. It's all one word there. You'll see the Jeep Talk Show there, of course. But we've got something for everybody out there. We've got the 4x4 Podcast, the Center Steer Podcast, the Trail Chasers Podcast, and our newest member, the On the Trail Podcast, is there too. All your one-stop shop for all your off-road audio needs. Oh, and uh, I saw another post uh, from uh, Trail Chasers uh, web, uh, not web page, uh, Facebook page that they have another episode out. So this is like two after a long hey. dry spell. So, oh man, I love me some Cody. Yeah, He's got yeah. a great show. Yep, he does. Yeah, he does. Shut up and listen. Shut up. And- so shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey, <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G Mama. Top six and a half storage solutions. Yes. Six and a <laughs> half. Um, I'm going back to my top five. Oh, good. Yay. And I'm going to give you guys, all you guys listen out there, a sneak preview of, you guys will hear it first, here on the Jeep Talk Show, other rather than my YouTube channel, which I'm going to be posting the video, hopefully if I get it edited in time, this Sunday. But anyway, it's going to be my Jeep Mama's top five Jeep Wrangler storage solutions. Now, I I love organizing and I love putting stuff in bins and bags and shelves. And so I've tried several different things in my Jeep Wrangler. And some of them have not worked so well for me. And some of them have. So I thought I would give you my top five most favorite Jeep Wrangler storage solutions, and I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this in order, Tony. I know how that really kind of bothers <laughs> you, and I just randomly do them, and they're not in any particular order. Order, but I'm gonna start with number five and work my way up to number one. So my number five storage idea is the Spider Web Shade Grab Bag. Now I got this at the PA Jeep Show last week or last year um, in the walking around shopping with the vendors, I saw something purple and I'm like, oh my God, I have it to have it. And I just bought it because it was purple. And what it is, it's like the spider web shade material and they made a Velcroed pocket that goes on your, and I don't even know if they're called glove boxes anymore, but I'm calling it a glove box. Um, And it goes on that handle. And this is an, it comes in all the, signature colors there's 11 of of them and it can fit all jeep wrangler models from the cj to the current jk's and you can put your smartphone in there you can put in smaller tablets in there your wallet you can hang your sunglasses shades off it and i like to hook my handheld cb radio on it when i go off-roading so that's number five um, number four is, and I believe, Tony, you have this one as well, is the Blue Ridge Overland Gear Molly Seatback Panel. I do. And it it's a Molly panel that you put on your, like your driver's seat, but it fits on the back part of it, so you can put Molly bags on it and put stuff in those Molly bags. And it's great if you have little kids. 
you can have a Molly bag with their colors or their, you know, whatever toys they need to take with them. Um, or you can put stuff in there that you need easy access to, like a first aid kit, or maybe you want to put your hat and your gloves in there. Um, so that's number four. Number three are the Molly bags, and they come in all different sizes, and I love my Molly bags. You can get them at Blue Ridge Overland Gear, or you can get them at Justice Off-Road. Both of those websites carry these bags. And and the Molly bags, you really need to have Molly panels if you're going to hook them in your Jeep, or you can just have them just laying in your Jeep, I guess, too. So number two is the More Ride Ammo Can Carrier with a Molly panel. And this, these, these, I say these because I have two of them, but this um, device, I guess you would call it, this carrier, works with the awkward space that is in your Jeep right above the inner fender on the rear tires. And it's a super easy install. And th there's three different places you can use storage here. And that's where you put the ammo can, where you strap it on the little shelf. But I like using the Craftsman like canvas bags because they, they don't have handles that rattle. But that's me. So you can use either or. And then you can also get some Molly bags to put on the Molly panel. And then in between the fender well and the molly panel you can shove stuff in there like your hats your gloves a, a brain coat a recovery strap whatever you want there is space to put more stuff in there and it's secure in that space because it's such a tight space so that's the more ride ammo can carrier with molly panel so my number one most favorite storage solution is the justice off-road molly tailgate panel and this is a whole panel that you and it's the first time i drilled holes in my jeep that you can put on the inside of your tailgate and it covers the whole tailgate and you can attach um i have right now i have four molly bags depending on the sizes um with all my stuff that i can get quickly by just opening the tailgate you don't need to go dig around inside your jeep but i have a, like a first aid kit i have some tools that you would use on the trail that you would need easy access to to um i have my tire deflators and my um i can't think of what else i have in there but it's all stuff that quickly can be gotten to Anyway, all the links to all these items are going to be in the show notes. You can also check out my Jeep Mama build page, and I have pictures of all these items and links to their websites and links to my installs of some of these items. And also, hopefully Sunday around 11, I'll be posting up my Jeep Mama's Garage video on my YouTube channel. And speaking of my YouTube channel, I know back in February... I was begging people to subscribe so I could hit that 1,000 mark, and I did it, and I want to thank everyone for that, but you would be amazed. It took me, I don't know, when I joined Facebook or YouTube, 2014, it took me four years to get 1,000 subscribers. Since February, I have gained 822 more subscribers, and I want to thank everyone who's subscribing to me. And I'm thinking once I hit 2,000, I think I'm going to give away something. So if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, please go do that. And once we hit 2,000 subscribers, I'm going to find some Jeep-related thing to give away. Cool. <laughs> Are you guys there? Did I put I'll you I'll believe sleep? it when I see it. I don't know. That's weird, I isn't it? How, uh, how sometimes you got to beg, borrow, and steal, and then... Without much effort at all, it just uh, kind of comes. Yes. Well, I, I shouldn't say much effort. You put a lot of effort into editing those uh, those videos that you do. Uh, so uh, you put a lot of work in there. Of course, uh, it's nice to be rewarded uh, with uh, you know with people coming and looking. Right, exactly, and getting you know great comments about my <laughs> vocabulary. 
Hey, folks, coming up later in the show, we're going to hear again from Nikki G and see what he's up to. Hey, guys, over the last week or so, you have been very busy reaching out to us and interacting with us. And we've gotten a lot of feedback from you, our listeners. And, uh, well, if you guys would like to, uh, well, join in on that sort of thing, take, a, take us to task on something or give us a little pat on the back. Well, you guys can leave us a five-star review and, uh, well, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think any number of places from iTunes to Facebook, even our YouTube channel and beyond. Uh, this week, we've got one. We got a five-star review uh, from iTunes, in fact. And it says, well, this is from Chad Burt, and uh, he says, what, why, mo- what, why more could you ask for? <laughs> <laughs> if you aren't already subscribed to this podcast, then you are doing yourself a disservice. The material on this podcast may be Jeep-centric, but it's entertaining enough to even satisfy a non-Jeep owner. The cast is well-informed and provides their knowledge in a fun manner. As a new Jeep owner, I have found it imperative to go back and listen to the entire catalog of episodes. A lot of the questions I didn't know I had were answered. And to those who are seasoned Jeepers, well, you'll you'll get even more out of this podcast than anyone else. Long story short, everyone, including your father's brother's nephew's cousin, former roommate, should subscribe to this roommate. <laughs> by the way, That's the funny. answer isn't by the way, the answer isn't red or black. It's green. Purple Zoe 2 is okay too, I guess. <laughs> woo go woo. Ravens. He finishes with Go Ravens. <laughs> go Vikings. Well, thanks very much, Chad Burt. We appreciate the five-star review and taking the time to uh, to write out a little comment for us as well. And, of course, we read all these comments on the air as we get them and when we get them, of course. And uh, if you'd like to do that, well, just reach out to us in any number of uh, ways where you can find us, and uh, you can find a way to leave us a review. Mm, yeah, I guess Green Jeeps are okay. Hey, this is Frank Ellis from Route 16 asking the question, Mud or rocks, which one do you prefer? Rocks, brother, all the way. All right, Jeep, so- Jeep Show Talk question. Which one do you prefer, mud or rocks? I like muddy rocks. Very well. What? <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> I don't know about, uh, about where you guys are at, but out here, muddy rocks are super slippery. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. We get this, like, snotty peanut butter is the only way I can describe the clay that we have out here and when you get that some of that stuff on top of the rocks and a little bit of rain mixed in ah, it's just that you cannot keep a line Uh, you're just not uh, you need to (laughs) you need to chew peanut butter with your mouth closed Josh (laughs) yeah that's that's what I that's what I'm doing wrong (laughs) well back in the second week of May we got a letter from a jeeper up in Canada who was sharing with us his experience in buying a brand new 2018 jail wrangler and not getting delivery of it. In episode 332 and episode 333, we told the story of poor Tony T, who has owned Jeeps before and currently owns a 2013 JKU. Well, he went to the dealership, picked out his options, colored the whole nine. After seeing the brand spanking new JL come out on the market, he knew he just had to have one. And then he waited for the delivery of his new Jeep. And he waited. And he waited. And he waited some more. Only to be told that, yes, his Jeep had arrived, but no, he couldn't pick it up as the government or some such power in charge claimed it failed its inspection and wouldn't tell him why. So he had no other option but to start the whole process over again. Tony was a good sport, though. After months and months and months of, well, getting to that point, he jumped through the hoops he needed to and even kept us in the loop during the process as well. I will say this, though. The man's patience needs to be commended, as it has been, well, at least six months now or so since he had ordered it the first time, and we're getting our latest update from Tony T. He writes, Hello, Tammy, Tony, and Josh. Great job, as always, on the show you've been putting out. It sounds like you are all enjoying the summer. I just thought I would give you an update and let you know that my JL Rubicon finally came in. It arrived on June... Yeah, right? It arrived on June 29th, five months to the day of the original order date. It even caught us by surprise because the dealer status page put it in somewhere in Indiana still. Now, I just did a 1,300 kilometer trip, about 800 miles, up and down Vancouver Island this past weekend to gently break it in. It was fantastic. It is reminiscent of my past Jeeps. That makes it very familiar, but better in so many ways. So, yes, I'm happy. Also, it's black. But to be fair, the red accent throughout looks really good. Thanks again for the great work, and as always, I look forward to the next show. Signed, Tony T. from Canada. 
It's Man, about that is just, damn time. I know, yeah. right? I, I've, got, I've got a smile on my face ear to ear. I'm so happy for this guy. It's not even funny. He has so much patience. It's unbelievable. I there's no way I could. Have well, if, that if, long. if you if you recall, he was <laughs> he's driving around in his his older Jeep, and he sees these new JLs driving around him in Canada. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Like why? Hey, they got theirs. Why can't I get mine? You know, <laughs> what, and just why insult me? the injury. Yeah. And and what what was worse is that you know the dealership wasn't getting him any any information yeah. really. They were they were kind of just as, as much in 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 the. Uh, mix of things as he was and, and and being uninformed and whatnot the the status updates were all kind of you know there's these codes and whatnot he had to go to different websites to look up what these codes meant and, and and what that meant as far as you know where the status of his jeep was and everything and then to find out that oh yes it's here in country but no you can't get it because <laughs> it failed inspection and what is worse than that is they wouldn't tell him why yeah so he had no other option but to start the process all over again, I, I a lot of people I think would have given up and just been like, screw it, I'm I'm buying a Prius, you know, and, and you know just decide to give it I'll get, give up on it all together. But uh, but not Tony T from Canada. He he buckled down and uh, nose to the grindstone and just stuck it out. And uh, man, I mean, got raked over the coals. Hopefully, they gave him a good deal though, and, and he got this for a screaming price. Uh, for all the trouble that he's had to go through. Now, I don't know, and I don't know if he's going to share that, and I wouldn't expect him to. But nonetheless, Tony T from Canada, congratulations, buddy. Yes. And thank you for sending us the pictures. Looks awesome, and I can tell you're happy, man. That that smile beaming, absolutely beaming ear to ear. So congratulations, Tony. So I can I can just imagine, you know, whenever the, the first Jeep arrived in Canada and uh, they were going to have to make that call, what a perfect opportunity for... Tony, I got some good news and some bad news. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which one good do you news want? Is, is you're going to be seeing a lot of these. Which bad one news you, is none of them are yours. <laughs> which which one do you want first? Well, the good news is it's in the country. It's here. Bad news is you can't have it. Oh man, and he has to wait another four or five months to get it. Mm-hmm. Goodness gracious! I've been well, angry. Yeah, once again, congratulations, Tony T. And thanks, you, thank you so much yeah, we, for uh, putting a little bow on this and re- giving us some closure. Because I was actually, I was thinking of this guy just the other day. I was like, man, I wonder if you know, I haven't it. heard yeah. from, that, from that guy up in Canada. I wonder if he ever got his Jeep. And sure enough, well, you put it out there and the universe uh, responds. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I just, I, it's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. The who? Well, there is a ton of options when it comes to upgrading the rear axle of your Jeep, from cool and functional aftermarket differential covers to gear sets, armor to trusses, lockers, chromoly axle shafts, and more. The list goes on and on. But typically, none of those are going to fill you on the trail. Oh, sure, it's possible to snap an axle shaft or break your gears. Trust me, I've seen it happen. And yes, you can even crack a differential cover open, too. But it's going to be way more likely that you break a U-joint before you break any of these other items. Now, you may find U-joint products out there that claim they are bomb-proof or bulletproof or come with a lifetime warranty, but none of that is going to prevent you from breaking one in the first place in a perfect storm scenario of circumstances when you're out on the trails. Now, the best thing to do to avoid breakage is to keep yourself out of harm's way. Wheel smart and don't start a run with the words, here, hold my beer, I want to try something. But I'm about to share with you a low-cost trick you can use to upgrade a Chrysler 8 and a quarter. Trusses are expensive, and there's certainly a lot of cost involved in swapping gears. Sure, Arma will protect you, and there's some cool options out there too for that. But for less than 20 bucks, you can gain a little more peace of mind when it comes to your U-joints. Now, U-joints don't last forever, plain and simply. Even if all your Jeep sees is road miles, those U-joints will fail eventually. But if miles aren't your only concern and you take your Jeep off-road, well, then this is a mod that you're going to want to look at doing. Once upon a time, the inventor of the U-joint was looking for a way to hold them in place when he got the bright idea to just strap them in place using a small, thin, stamped piece of metal. And this is fine unless you plan on putting any stressors on that U-joint like those found when wheeling off-road. Now, Sometimes those forces add up, and those puny little U-joint straps can only take so much abuse before they stretch out or fail altogether. And when that happens, carnage will ensue. So how can we improve on this design, do it easily and without breaking the bank? Simple with a trip to the parts store and a drill bit. We're going to substantially increase the strength of that rear drive shaft joint. A company by the name that you are undoubtedly familiar with, Dorman, 
has a line of products named Help with an exclamation point. And they range from valve stem covers to knobs for heater controls and window cranks to clips and fasteners and more. Basically all that little stuff that you'd ordinarily go to the junkyard or the dealership for. Now one item in particular is labeled as a Ford U-joint retainer kit. But don't let the don't let the make fool you. These will work for a Jeep's Chrysler eight and a quarter just as well. And its model number is eight one zero zero four. Check your local parts store's inventory by looking online or calling them and asking them to look that number up eight one zero zero four. This part is basically a little U bolt. Yes, not unlike those that you'd see holding the leaf springs to their perches, just much smaller. These get rid of that little weak strap and replaces it with this U bolt. You will have to increase the diameter of the mounting hole slightly, and this is to get rid of the threads in the yoke so that the ends of the U-bolt can slide through those holes that the straps would screw to. Now, using a good 5 16 inch drill bit and a friend to make sure you're going straight, bore out those holes, ditch the straps, and using two of these 81004 U-bolt kits, secure the U-joint to the yoke using the included hardware. That's it. I know. A trip to the parts store and five minutes of wrenching or drilling, and you're done. Rock Auto has these for like four bucks. Amazon has them for under eight, and most parts stores sell them for under ten dollars as well. You will need two. So if you don't want to spring the seventy-five dollars or more for a beefed-up replacement yoke, and you're still a ways away from that thirteen fifty conversion, well, then consider this mod. It's quick, it's easy, and it's inexpensive, and the results are impressive. Look at it this way: you're going from is what like five sixteenths hardware to half inch hardware. That's more than double the size, and that means more than double the strength. Not to mention, it's a lot easier to get a third one of these to just throw in the trail bag as a spare instead of trying to track down a replacement U-joint strap or looking for the one you lost by dropping it in the rocks. And before you start down the path of, well, I might as well do this to the front axle too, well, unfortunately, this model number of part will not work on the Dana 30, and there are other options out there if you're working with the Dana 44. Well, that's it for now, Jeepers. Hope this helps, and be sure to tune in each and every week for ep- for each episode of the Jeep Talk Show for more tech talk, tips, and tricks. You know, Josh, I actually did this to my Cherokee, um, but did I, I didn't do it the way you described here. Um, ah. A buddy of mine, Matt, told me just to go down to uh, the local auto parts place, and you know the, the rescue center or the whatever they call that little area where they have all the general parts that you can, yep. uh, like a, a doorknob and, I don't know, uh things for cranking windows up and down. Well, they also sell U-joints. So uh, I got a bunch of those uh, because they were like next to nothing, kind of like what you said here in the in the review. And I got back there because I was mainly concerned about doing the my Chrysler 8 and a quarter uh, since that would get the, the most use uh, out of uh, the day-to-day and, and off-road. And I went to go, uh, before drilling it, I looked at it and put the U-bolts up there, and the U-bolts were not going to be long enough for that yoke. And it may be different for the 98. I don't know. Because mm. that's, that's all I have to go on. So uh, I looked at it, and I went, well, screw this. This isn't going to work. And that's when I went and bought the yoke. Um, not from Rock Auto. I can't remember who it was from now. But it was like 75 bucks, and it was a 1310 yoke, but it was, it was set up uh, for U-bolts. So that's how I got it on mine. Now the U bolts. I went to, after I got done with uh, uh, do, fixing the eight and a quarter with uh, with U bolts. I moved to the front for the Dana Thirty. This is uh, again on a 1998 Jeep Cherokee uh, high pinion uh, Dana Thirty. Perfect. the The U bolts were perfectly fine. Drilled it out, uh, stuck them in there, and I've had zero problems with it. It was interesting. Super super easy. Now again, I didn't I didn't use the U bolts that you're talking about here. Uh, I just used I just used the, the the ones they have at the local auto parts place. I mean, I could measure them in something, but um, I actually probably should trim those off a little bit. I was looking to see looking at uh, stuff underneath there before the the wheeling trip, and I noticed is how close that uh, uh, that U bolt is. Uh, the U bolt ends are clo- so close to the control arm. Now I don't think they're going to hit it, but I, I still thought it would be a good idea not to have as much U bolt sticking out. But uh, exactly what you're talking about, but on the Dana 30. So I got U-bolts front and rear now. Of course, I upgraded to the 1350, and it's U-bolts, uh, so uh, even better. Right, right. Yeah, now likely there are going to be other options out there. Make sure you look for the numbers that I listed in uh, here in, in Tech Talk today, and uh, you should be able to get the right the right ones. Now, there are other options out there. Obviously, Tony got some that work for the Dana 30. Uh, these ones likely won't. Now, the reason why I heard they won't is uh, primarily because there isn't enough clearance for that half-inch nut on the back side of the yoke, um, which, I mean, obviously, you could probably modify it if you're, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. 
um, or go down the road, or route that Tony did uh, and just find another option that, uh, well, it's the same mod, just with a different part. You know, I'm not so sure that those uh, those nuts are laying flat on the back of the yoke. Uh, oh. To be honest with you, it may be a little askew, but I, I guarantee you they're tight. And uh, I don't think you mentioned it here. Those straps are meant for one-time use. You take the, the drive shaft off, you're supposed to replace the straps. Not so with the U-bolt. This is a great mod, people. Yeah, absolutely. And very, very inexpensive. Oh, so well, inexpensive. Any, yeah. Anything you guys would like to add to this? Maybe you have a question for Tech Talk. We'll just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. And you never know. Your question might just get asked and answered here on the show. Hey, guys. This is Sean from Texas. He got done at the trail with Tony. And I was listening to episode 341 and Tammy was talking about the lower dashboard buttons. I need to correct Josh. Uh, no, there is a different interior wiring harness from the sports versus the Rubicon. And to clarify with Tammy, no, unfortunately, it's not easy to put lights switches in that panel as that whole panel is one circuit board. It is doable, but it is a pain in the you-know-what. <laughs> Thank you much. Bye. You know, I'm surprised that they would use a different harness, Josh. I was with you on that one. I, I really thought that, you know, they would streamline things and not do something special, even though it had the Rubicon. Maybe it's the heated seat wiring they needed. You know, I, I know the Rubicons have the electronic lockers and everything like that. Maybe it's it's some of that wiring underneath the Jeep. Um, they, they just don't have anywhere to put it or whatever. I, you know, I've, it's my experience, however, most vehicles do have common yeah. uh, uh, common wire, wire wiring systems. And even though that vehicle didn't come with, you know, whatever option that you were talking about, um, you know, it does have the wiring for it. I mean, for instance, my Cherokee has the options for heated mirrors, even though my Jeep didn't come with that. That sport model never came with heated mirrors, but my Jeep is wired for it because it was in the limiteds. So, you know, it's it's maybe they changed some things along the way. Obviously, my Cherokee is made in a different place than the JKs it was uh, are right. made. Um, different line, you know, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I mean, maybe there is some something to that. Uh, I know they use a different sort of uh, vehicle, uh, you know, information bus system is, is different. So it could be entirely different as far as the wiring goes. I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't pulled too many JKs down to the down to just the bare wiring harness. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have as much experience with it as maybe our caller did. You know, uh, we don't know everything, and sometimes we miss stuff. So it's great for you guys to call in and let us know because we, yeah, we, we want to know too, and uh, we certainly want the audience to know. Josh, uh, whenever you took your front bumper off, did you notice that there was a wire uh, hanging there in the center area of not not the bumper, but if like it would be fed through the bumper or, or over the bumper or through the bumper. Tony, I've got, I've got so much electrical modifications done on that Jeep. I've got a oh, lot of you got in the front. Yeah, I noticed. So. I noticed when I took my bumper off to put on the aftermarket bump aftermarket bumper. There's just a wire hanging there, and I think that it was for uh, a light to go on the front license plate. That was the only thing I could figure, and I mean. Why? I mean, why would you? Why would you include that? So it's the same type of deal. They they've got this harness. It's a stock harness, and uh, it was probably Europe or someplace that they needed the mm. the, the front mm -hmm. license plate lit, and there it was. Uh, I never did put a, a meter on it to see if it would come on. You know, when you pulled the uh, pulled the thing out right. for the lights, but uh, that's the only thing I could come up with for the placement. It just didn't make any sense. Yeah, I'd buy that one. So yeah, there's there's some weird stuff that goes on in vehicle electronics, and uh, yeah, it doesn't always uh, play by the rules. Tom Wood has been doing only four-wheel drive, drive shafts, and slip yoke eliminators for 20 years. As an American-owned and operated company, they provide solutions trusted by your average weekend wheeler, all the way to the rock-crushing rigs at King of the Hammers. If you have a Jeep, Tom Wood's custom drive shafts has a solution for you. Using their in-house developed gold seal universal joints, you can count on the strength of your drive shaft at its weakest and most abused points. And if you're concerned about warranties, it doesn't get any better than their trail hazard protection. If a weld ever breaks, they take care of it. If a gold seal universal joint breaks, they take care of it. But also any damage to your drive shaft. Those other companies just put a new U-joint in your hand and send you on your way. 
Tom Woods loves Jeeps. In fact, he has three highly modified Jeeps, so he understands our passion, and so do his employees. Tom Woods custom drive shafts are always shipped, completed, balanced, greased, and ready to install. They pay attention to the finest details so you are less likely to run into any issues. If you've ever experienced a drive shaft problem, you know just how important this is. When you research custom drive shafts, there is just one name that tops all the list, Tom Wood. Trust them with one of the most critical parts of your driveline. And from now until the end of July, you can get 10% off your order using the exclusive Jeep Talk Show promo code. At checkout, just enter JTS18-1 and you'll get the exclusive discount. Promo code is not valid with any other offer, discount, or promotion and is only good until the end of July. Visit Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts today. Just go to 4xshaft.com. Are you tired of all that noise from those other shows? I think you have to keep that rig at the moment. Now you can relax to the pleasing tones of the Jeep Talk Show every week. Unless you got Dana 60s and 40s. Get the highest audio quality possible with each download. Now, you know, you can use them in with them, with them super swampers. And if you're tired of all that other stuff. Uh, and a thing with the tech and big old tires and a lot of Then subscribe to the highest quality podcast on the web. The Jeep Talk Show. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, and more. You guys are going to give me a beer. From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. Well, here we are again with another great interview. And uh, yeah, I know it's going to be a great interview. I'm not just saying that. We've got uh, Jason Cook. Uh, he likes to be called Coach. <laughs> it's uh we were just talking about that before we started the recording the interview and uh, i wouldn't have not thought that that uh, last name was pronounced pronounced uh pronounced i like that pronounced uh cook yeah pretty much everybody um uh screws up on my last name so that's why we figured it was easier just calling me coach hey with a name like muckleroy i always tell people don't worry about it i mispronounce it myself <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jason, thanks a lot for being with us tonight, and uh, let's start off a little bit with uh, a little some stuff about you. Uh, are, you're not originally from Texas, are you? No, actually, um, I'm up from uh, western Pennsylvania. I uh, lived up uh, north of Pittsburgh pretty much all my life. Um, took me a long time, but I finally got down to Texas. I couldn't be happier. Was Was Texas something that you were interested in uh, in the past, or was it just something work-related that brought you down here? Uh, it, it was work related. Um, we we decided that it was time to make a move, and uh, we picked a whole bunch of different. Uh, we want to live somewhere where it's warm, and we kept on ending up in Texas. And I got a job offer I couldn't refuse, so packed the whole family up, all the jeeps, and we headed to Texas. Now I know uh, Tammy is at Brosh Creek. Is that in Pennsylvania? Yeah, yeah. it's in Pennsylvania. So, uh, were you into jeeping before you moved down here? I don't know how long you've been here in Texas, Jason. Yeah, I, well, I've been in Texas for about 10 months now, and uh, I used to wheel over at uh, AOAA. Oh, okay. Oh, yep. Yep, yep, Tammy yep. goes there, too. Um, so, uh, you know, after watching uh, the Extreme Terrain uh, uh, TV show, I'd always wanted to go to Rosh Creek, but there's no way I was going to be able to drive up that far uh, to be able to go off-road. So I just I thought that was pretty cool. You, you guys seemed, in, and when I say you guys, you guys up in that, that area of the country seem to have some pretty nice wheeling uh, spots. Yeah, you know what? And I, I tell you, AOA was probably, uh, besides Moab, has been one of my favorite spots. Uh, the trails are uh, clearly marked. Uh, the rock terrain is phenomenal. I mean, it's some of the rocks. I mean, every time I go back, it was completely different than what I remembered. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, you know, and they, they marked the trails. Uh, well, this is a, a blue trail. Yeah, no, it wasn't. That was definitely a black trail <laughs> after I right. got halfway through it. <laughs> surprise so yep. so tell us a little bit about your jeep what kind of jeep do you have uh, which one um your have, favorite oh oh geez again which no <laughs> i have uh currently the one i'm running is my 97 tj i'm running 488 gears with uh aussie lockers um 35 inch uh bfgs uh it's getting ready to go up to the shop I'm getting ready to do a full swap. I'm going to put uh, JK Dana 44 axles under it 
and I'll be putting uh, eating lockers and an ARB in the back. Um, that's still my old, it's a long arm, six inch. Uh, I got a front facing camera, rear facing camera, uh, full cage. It, it's standard. It's still my favorite Jeep. Um, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I have a cool wife because she's built her own Jeep. And she's just getting ready to finish her. She has a JKU six inch. We're just getting ready to do a long arm and put uh, Dana 44s and I think I think 488 gears. I haven't. She hasn't decided which way she's going yet. <laughs> wow. So so your your TJ then uh, has uh, Dana 30 probably low pinion. I'm sorry, high pinion on the front and Dana 35 yep. rear right now. Yeah. And you know what? I've wheeled that thing for years now. And everybody says, I'm going to snap those axles. <laughs> the only big thing I ever did was put uh, chromolis in them. Uh-huh. And uh, honestly, as long as you know how to wheel it and you don't get a lot of tire hop, I've never had a problem with that with those axles. I love hearing that. Uh, that, that that's great to know. And, and, you know, here on the show, we often make uh, make a joke about uh, people running Data 35. Those things can go nuclear and uh, take out a whole city whenever they go. So. Uh, the, the, the Dana 35 just has a real bad reputation uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that somebody does something, you know, takes it off road, takes it in the rocks and you're able to, uh, <laughs> not kill a small, a small group of people. Yeah. I mean, it, it all boils down to, you know, picking the line and when you know, you're not making it up that, uh, you're not making that line, you got to know when to back off, you know, right. don't get it hopping, don't get the tire spinning. So it's going to grab real quick and snap the axle. But like I said, I, I, I've wheeled that thing for three or four years, and I just, about four years ago is when I switched to rocks, and uh, never had a problem, but now I'm going to, you know, I have to be in a Moab, and a couple of the other places I've been to, um, I decided it's time to upgrade these axles. Right. Yeah, I don't blame you. Now, uh, did you say uh, what uh, what axles? I mean, I heard you say Dana 44, but are they uh, G2s or... Uh, you getting from from uh, made from somebody? No, actually, um, because my wife she has uh, she got new axles for hers. Um, the front axle is a chroma. Actually, it's a it's a prototype. It's a chromoly um, axle housing with CV joints, and then I'm taking her JK axles. And they're the Rubicon, and I'm putting them underneath the TJ. Oh, okay, that's not bad. That's a good uh, reuse of uh, axles. Um, yeah. So, so what? What the hell is she doing with hers? Where she uh, that she needs something better than uh, Rubicon axles? Well, because um, this was supposed to be her daily driver that lasted for six months, <laughs> then realized, you know what? I enjoy wheeling, and uh, there's no way that uh, I'm going to let you do all the driving. So she said, "Looks like we're uh, building my Jeep." For the third time. Okay, so you guys, both of you guys are out on the trail. You're you're in your TJ. She's in her JK. Who's mm-hmm. the one in front? Usually, I'm leading, but I will be honest. Uh, you know, she she can wheel with the best of them, but will I spot for her? <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. People it will go, be, it will oh, be you your spot? fault. <laughs> nope, I, I back off real fast. I ain't telling her to nothing. No way. Ain't going to happen. You remember that right. time that you told me to, <laughs> and then I broke that axle? Yeah, I would not yeah. blame hey, you. We've been married for, you know, going on 18 years now, and uh, that's one way we keep our sanity. I don't spot her for anything. Husbands should not spot their wives, period. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... You have this Facebook page, this Facebook group. Um, can you tell us about the group? Yeah, it's uh, it's Planet JP, um, the Savannah Strong Jeep Alliance. Um, it started out as I, I was so tired of a lot of these Jeep clubs or Jeep groups that if somebody came in and asked a simple question, they would get uh, blasted and made fun of. And everything on the sort. And my thing was, you know, at one time we were all newbies. Mm-hmm. At one time, none of us knew anything. And so I decided I would start a page where it doesn't matter if you were uh, a curb crawler, a mud runner, rock crawler, you know, whatever it was, you know, all Jeeps are a Jeep. And I got also got tired of, you know, just because you don't drive a just because you don't drive a Wrangler 
you don't have a real Jeep? Well, I'm sorry. If it says Jeep on the side, it's a real Jeep. Exactly. So I, so I, I started a club, and I will tell you, it took it took a while to weed out a lot of the uh, the bad uh, apples, and we got up to um, you know a good group of people that's willing to help pretty much anybody that comes on the page, no matter how dumb the question is. <laughs> um, and there's no bashing, and I made it pretty much um, clear from the very beginning. I'll give you one warning, and if you still want to continue to bash or be a keyboard warrior, I'm banning you. That's it. Gone. History. And it's it's worked. I see a lot of uh, members that, you know, from all over the country, um, even people in Australia that are now friends outside of the group. I can see them messaging each other and making plans to hang out. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to create a, a Jeep group page that felt more like what the Jeep lifestyle is all about. You know, we're all family. We, we look out for each other. You know, we bust on each other, but it's all in fun. But when it comes down to it, if uh, it says Jeep on the side, it's a real Jeep, plain and simple. And, you know, I seem to find, <clears throat> hear more and more stories about people creating groups like this or getting getting out of groups because of this <clears throat> nastiness that happens. And um, I, I think finally we're seeing more and more people coming together and being nice to each other, which I really love to see. Yeah. And I, you know what I, I, you know, I grew up, I've been with Jeep doing Jeeps and building Jeeps for about 20 some years. And, you know, some of our best times were, sitting in the garage, helping that, helping that other Jeep out, getting their Jeep fixed just so we could go trail riding the next day or getting out on the trails and, you know, somebody gets stuck, you know, it, it's not a big deal. We'll spend four hours to get them out. And sometimes it was the best times. We had the most laughs and it was always everybody teaching everybody. And it seems nowadays people are starting to forget what being a real Jeep owner is. And, you know, they're all about, What's the most expensive part I could put on it? What can I do this? And <laughs> people are forgetting what what owning a Jeep is about. And it's nice to see some of the younger generation starting to listen to us old guys thinking, you know what? It, 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 let's go back to the way it was because that's when it was fun. You're talking about uh, the bashing and stuff. And that's a, it, it sounds like chapter and verse of what I did whenever I did uh, XJTalk.com. There was plenty of uh, Jeep Cherokee uh, uh, forums out there. But uh, I didn't like how people were being treated. And I thought, well, this is stupid. Uh, I have all the abilities to create my own website and, and maintain it. I'll just set it up and I'll do that one rule. And I was hope, hopefully I was going to either suck all the, the users from uh, everybody else or at least uh, cause uh, a, an environment to take root where the uh, administrators and moderators on these other forums would start, frankly, doing their job and straightening people out. And you know, the thing that I found, I think uh, xjtalk.com has been running since around 2005. And the thing I found out very quickly, if you if the administrators and the moderators set the tone of the forum or the Facebook page and basically make it very clear what is and isn't acceptable, being respectful to everyone, even those people that screw up, uh, everybody, they, they get along, they do what they're supposed to do. And uh, I think we, uh, we banned one person off of the site in, in that length of time. So uh, it's very easy to do. People want to get along, and uh, if you allow them to bash people, well, they will, because, frankly, it's fun. <laughs> right, exactly. And, 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 that's what, and that's what we notice. And, you know, the, our group is not huge or anything, but you know what? I can tell you, every single, I know every single member in there, and they're all generally good people. Um, you know, I, I've been blessed by, you know, the, the following that, you know, has joined up with the group and, you know, and honestly, the page is a lot of fun. We, we, we try to have as much fun as we can. Oh, of course. Now you originally started out with planet JP and then it morphed into uh, something else. Yeah. Um, it was planet JP in the beginning. And then one of our members, uh, David Lewis, um, his daughter was diagnosed with, uh, you, you and Sar, Sarcosm. I, Tacoma. I can never say it right. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it just so happened, um, you know, he was a fellow Jeeper. She loved Jeeps and everything. And I didn't realize when I moved to Texas, I was only about 45 minutes from him. 
And I got a phone call uh, one night and he was having a rough night. And I decided, I said, you know what? I'm 45 minutes away. Let me pick up a six pack. Well, I'll come to your house, you know, at least give him a break from everything. We can sit back and just talk Jeep and let it go. And I, after that, that evening, I drove back and I told my wife, I said, you know, we got to do something. I don't know what I want to do, but I got to do something. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do a, a Jeep parade um, that would go past his home where um, his daughter, Savannah, would be able to see all the Jeeps go by showing support for her. And, and I'll be honest, I, when I put this together, it was I, ha I did it in three days. I anticipated, I was hoping for 30 Jeeps. I mean, I just moved to Texas. I was only here for maybe two months. And uh, I said, you know, if I get 30 Jeeps to go by the house and let her know that, you know, we're here to support her. And I pulled in. There's 30 Jeeps already, already there. By the time we kicked the parade off, there's 328 Jeeps that showed up. Holy cow. That's great. And uh, wow. the, the, the parade was over five miles long. I think it took to go past to the, from the front Jeep to the, the final Jeep. It was, it took 25 to 35 minutes for all the Jeeps just to get past her house. Uh, she was able to come outside and, uh, you know, we, we had donations and everything. And, uh, at, at that point it, it was such an inspiration to so many people. We decided from now on, we're going to change the name to the, uh, Savannah strong, uh, Jeep Alliance in memory of her. Right, and that was the thing I was going to ask you next. Was uh, she eventually did succumb to the uh, to the sarcoma and passed away? Yes, she did. Yeah, it was right right after she wanted to make it to Christmas and New Year's, and it was right after New Year's um, she did pass. Um, no parent, and certainly no child, should ever have to go through that. And uh, I just I, I hate hearing about that, and I just can't help but think. Um, that you made a difference not only in, in her life and her quality of life, but her parents. And, and that's, that's all we hoped for. You know, um, I, I was, uh, you know, me, you've, you've heard me before. It's very few times I'm speechless, but, uh, after I saw how many Jeeps showed up and the look on her face, um, for the first time in my life, I, I had nothing to say. And yeah, I, bet, I, just, I bet you at some point you were blubbering like a baby as well. Darn right I was. <laughs> there was there was no holding back. You know, no, I, I there tried. can't be. That's just it's amazing to have that kind of uh, that kind of support, and yeah. uh, so it's wonderful, especially with what you're saying with only two or three days of notice. Yeah, and like I said, I truly I I, I pulled in the uh, H E B parking lot and I turned my I turned to my wife. I said, "Oh please, oh please, just give me thirty five <laughs> jeeps." Right. And about a half hour later, my daughter turns to me and she goes, "Dad, I think you got it." <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Time's so, ten. So I understand you have another event coming up. Yes, uh, we got an event happening uh, in McGregor, Texas. Um, this one is the Destiny Matters event, and it's Jeepers for Teenage Suicide Prevention. Um, there was a group member, uh, Billy Hill, reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in putting on another event. Um, he gave me the details about Desi's mom and um, how she has a scholarship set up for the students in McGregor and that her daughter passed away from suicide and uh, asked me if I would be interested. I got uh, I was able to sit down with the family and uh, after I sat down with the family, it, it was 100 percent. I'm in. Let's do this. Um, and this event is going to be a lot bigger because I actually had more than three days. Um, <laughs> we've, we've had, we've had about, uh, we had three months and, uh, it's basically, it's going to be, uh, a 27 mile long parade. It's going to start in McGregor, uh, high school and, uh, it'll go up towards Waco and then back. We're going to actually end right back in, uh, the high school parking lot, but we're going to have uh, food vendors. We're going to have uh, live music. We have a lot of sponsors and vendors going to show up. We have uh, vendors like Dirty Acres are showing up. Um, Trendsetters will be there. Um, that one off-road park that somebody overheated at. Um, <laughs> oh, Hidden Falls. 
uh, Hidden Falls uh, is going to be there. Um, so, I mean, we got a lot of great uh, vendors coming, and then we're doing uh, a lot of big giveaways. We actually have an autographed guitar from Ted Nugent himself. Wow. Uh, with a Texas flag on it that he has played. We have uh, a Nolan Ryan autographed baseball. Uh, then we got, like I said, Dirty Acres is uh, doing a giveaway. Painless Off-Road, they're doing one of their trail rockers for a giveaway. Uh, Crawler, which I know you guys had them on the show. Mm -hmm. They're going to be there, and they're doing some giveaways. Um, JCR Off-Road, Aero X Industries, uh, Skull Crushers. Terraflex is uh, doing uh, their Falcon Piggyback Shocks as a giveaway. Um so I mean it's it's going to be so yeah it's going to be a, it's going to be a raffle and everything, um, so you know you buy five tickets you can walk away with uh, you know Terraflex uh, piggyback shocks and it what really ties this all in again is David Lewis and his brand new Savannah Strong Jeep will be leading the parade for this event which is very special to all of us. Now, tell us a little bit about the young lady that uh, that took her life and, you know, th th this whole event is about. Uh, I don't want to gloss over that, the, the reason for the event. Um, it, 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 right now, it is for the Desi uh, Contreras uh, Memorial Scholarship. Um, she, she was such a lively person. She was really big in art and music. Um, I mean, she was a ray of sunshine. It, it really caught everybody off guard. Um, and I, I, it's, again, it's one of those things, you know, you, you never know what anybody is going through. You know, they might put that smile on their face in front of everybody, but, uh, you know, they, they feel like they they have nobody to talk to. And by doing this event, we want to bring awareness to this and let everybody know there's always someone out there to talk to, you know, and, you know, our whole goal for this whole entire event is if we could just save, save one life, that's it. You know, one person sees this and go, you know what? Tomorrow is going to be a better day. You know, there exactly. are people out there that are going to support me. And maybe they'll reach out and call someone and, you know, you never know. Exactly. And 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 that's the thing. And we've noticed uh, as, you know, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm just a, a new Texan. Um, I guess I'm not allowed to be called a Texan yet. I think I have to be here a couple years first. But 20. You have to be here 20 years. And 20, Dallas, 20 years. Uh -huh. that, yeah, I knew there was a rule. And Dallas doesn't uh, count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I, I've noticed more and more, we're seeing more and more uh, teenage, you know, mm -hmm. they're seniors, they're juniors in high school, you know, and, you know, it, it, it's so rough for them. They don't think, they don't, you know, they don't think that it, it's going to get better. When it does get better, it gets a lot you know? better. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I tell I tell my kids, you know, that's twelve years of your life in school. When you get out of high school, nine times out of ten, you ain't going to talk to any of them anymore. No. You know, exactly. your life starts after high school. That's when you become. That's when you're ready to blossom. And uh, so uh, that's the biggest thing. You know, we just want to let people know that you know we see the cry for help. Uh, we want to let everybody know the Jeep community is going to. Uh, Come together, you know, show, have everybody have a good time and basically get people um, away from being scared to talk about it. Right. You what's know, let's, what's let's wrong with Let's bring it to the thing. forefront. Let's get it in the news. Let's get people to understand that. Let's stop for a second. Let's take care of our kids. Let's quit, you know, putting so much pressure on them. Exactly. You know, let kids be kids again. And I, I, that's the biggest thing, you know, we really want to do is to bring awareness. Yeah, and I think also, too, at that age, and I believe the young lady was 17 whenever she passed. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, uh, I, the thing that I think the most important thing that I found out from go, going from a, a, a young adult to adulthood was you're not alone. You, you, you have gone through the same thing literally billions of people have gone through before you. So you're not different. Uh, you can be special. You can uh, think a little differently, but the problems and things that you go through in your life are the same that everybody else does. So it makes it so easy to talk to somebody about it if you just take the time to reach out and talk to somebody uh, and share your experiences. You'll find out that not only uh, did somebody else go through it, but they survived and 
they may you may see them as the most confident person in the world now and you can't believe that for yourself uh, and uh, like you say it's it's great to actually show that uh, through uh, events like this so that maybe little people will go well yeah you know I'm gonna I'm gonna try talking to somebody yeah and, and like I said that that's all we're asking you know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun event you know we are a little worried with uh, the heat wave that's coming through <laughs> Texas yeah it's gonna be hot <laughs> it, it's gonna be a hot day but you know we're, we're gonna have water we got food trucks and everything but like I said that our, our biggest thing is just to let people know, you know, we're all here. We've all been there. Um, anytime you need to talk, you know, we're, we're here. We're, we're, we're ready to listen. We've been there. We've done that. So let me uh, switch gears a, a little bit back to uh, Planet JP. And uh, th- there was, uh, I got an opportunity. I think most of the time uh, you do your uh, Facebook uh, shows, uh, Facebook live shows on Thursday, about the same time we we're recording the show or sor- shortly before. And I, I never get a chance to watch, but uh, something had come up, I think, with work, so you were unable to put it on Thursday, and you did it Friday. So I, I got to join in and, and have quite a good time watching your uh, your live show. Is that something that you do every week? Yeah, uh, it's it's called Coach's Couch. Um, I we have I have no idea how somebody came up with the name, and I just ran with it. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, your we, your family kind of runs you basically uh, on, during the show too. <laughs> oh yeah, I get abused the entire show. So if anybody wants to see me get abused, tune in because trust me, they do. Yeah, it, it started out as um, that it was just kind of letting people know what it, it was supposed to. It was just supposed to be once a month, if that. Just every every once in a while, I do want to just let everybody know what's happened with Planet JP, any new events coming up. Um, just trying to so people put a face to the person who's running it. Um, but then I came up with a brilliant idea. That um, all of these vendors, because I'm, I'm a little weird. I don't charge anybody anything to advertise on Planet JP. And it, it, it goes with, you know, if I believe in your product and or I run your product, then I'm going to let you advertise because, you know, I believe in it. Right. Um, so we decided, you know, to help the sponsors out, we would do a thing that it was called Swag Bag Giveaway. And the vendors would either give away hats, shirts. Some of them would give away products. And um, it, our contest is so way off. It's basically you pick a number between 1 and 100. And I keep on shrinking the number as the night goes on. And you win free shirts. And in order to participate, you have to be a member of Planet JP. And you have to share one of the vendors' uh, Facebook posts on your private page that way the vendor gets advertising from everybody in the group and whoever gets to participate in the coach's couch gets some some free uh, swag so how do people uh find out about this show i know i I bitched a little bit about you know i see you guys talking about it but i never know when it's going to be on or (laughs) how to watch it i didn't know it was facebook live so somebody, uh, somebody helped me out there. So uh, give, give people an idea how they can, uh, how, how they can watch this live event. Um, I have it broadcasted on the Planet JP uh, public page. Then I also broadcast it on our, on the uh, closed group page, which is the Planet JP Savannah Strong uh, Jeep Alliance page. Um, it's usually Thursday night, uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, give or take. Yeah. depending how late I am getting home from work. Right. And I, I've been doing it every week, but I will say I am taking uh, a month off because uh, I'm in the process of moving and my Jeeps are going to the shop and I'm getting ready to hit the trails again because I'm running out of content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let me ask you this. And, and if you don't want to talk about this, this is fine. Uh, I recently saw a post where you uh, basically were fed up with uh, all the politics and things that were going on, and uh, you were going to get back to doing the thing that got you started, which was wheeling. Uh, what can you share with us about what's going on, or, or per- perhaps some of the folks that are part of your group? Well, it without going into major details, um, you know, unfortunately, putting on these big events, um, my name gets out there a lot, and... It, it seems like a lot. Some 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 people would like to act like they're the ones behind it and would use my name to um, to get 
I guess to get stuff for them to get oh. people to know them or yeah. talk to and, and, and it got really complicated, so to speak. And I didn't. And one thing I always tell everybody: I, I don't have much in life, but I have my name, and I, I don't like people using my name for anything but. You know, unless I said so. Yeah, with your approval, right? With my approval. Yeah. And, and it just, there was a lot of, uh, th- these last few weeks have been very stressful trying to get everything put together. And unfortunately, some people want to be in the limelight for no reason whatsoever. And I got frustrated and I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a month off, kind of recharge my batteries. And, you know, and it also because my Jeeps are finally getting done after 10 months of being in Texas. And uh, I've been promising my uh, my kids that we're going to be hitting the trails again. And I keep on putting it off. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I've been doing everything for everybody for 10 months now. It's time for me to step back for a month, get back on the trails, get recharged. And that way I can come back stronger than ever and move on. Oh, one thing did uh, did hit me uh, while you were talking about this uh, this event that you have planned for tomorrow. I'm sorry, not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Well, I guess it would be tomorrow since we're, tomorrow, releasing, yeah. we're le- releasing on Friday. Um, but uh, you, do you have any background in, in setting up events and getting vendors uh, lined up for these type things? I mean, uh, I, I find that just a, to be a horrendous uh, job unless you have some past background. Are, are you learning as you're going? I wing it. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Honestly, I when I we I was a part of a, a really great col- uh, club up north that uh, I still consider them uh, family, and we would put on weekly events at uh, local restaurants and everything, and we would always do um, like donations for either the fire department, police department, um, just some nonprofit for every week, and it, and it was just basically. Um, it was like our Jeep night. People would show up. Wh- didn't matter what club you were in, show up for the the Jeep night and give money for the donations. We'd have a fifty fifty raffle. Nine times out of ten, if you won the fifty fifty raffle, most of the people who won would give the money right back to whatever uh, cause we were representing that uh, week. And I, I I think that's what really got me started. Now putting something on this size. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever done it. But uh, again, it seems like ever since I've I've come to Texas, I've got to know a lot of the vendors here in Texas, and they really, really helped me out and kind of guided me on who to talk to and um, you know what forms I should be filling out. So they know it's just not some Joe Schmo trying to get uh, free parts because. There's this event down at a yeah. local bar. Yeah, exactly. I think they get hit a lot of, uh, a lot for, for free stuff. <laughs> oh, and, definitely. Yeah. And this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask you for the evening. Um, your 1997 TJ, what color is it? It's not black. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, <Hey>. Tony, Tony. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I've, wa- I've been listening to your show for over a year now. Ever since I had to go pick tires up for my wife's uh, Jeep. So, trust me, I know. I, it's actually a green Jeep. Oh, oh. okay. Phew. <laughs> Don't worry, my wife has her, uh, a burgundy, but we can say it's red. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. So... I I don't understand why they don't make red tires. I used to have one on my bicycle years ago. If you could just have red tires to the Jeep, then it would be perfect. Well, why don't you go with the uh, General Grabbers? They got the raised uh, red letters. I don't want red letters. The whole tire needs to be red. <laughs> well, that might be a little different. I got spray paint. Yeah, that would look kind of... Why don't you go wheel in some red clay and then you know oh, what? No, you lots could of stain them. Why don't you plasti dip them? There you go. <laughs> that would be hysterical. <laughs> so, Jason, uh, how how can the kids and the, the the folks that love the social media find you uh, on all that? Uh, I'm assuming you're on all the social media. Yeah, I'm on the the Twitter gram. The uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that's a first face, when I hear that. Uh, the book gram. No, uh, Facebook. Uh-huh. Uh, again, it's Planet JP, uh, Savannah Strong Jeep Alliance. Uh, I'm on. Uh, Instagram, the Planet JP. Uh, I'm on Twitter, the Planet JP. Um, but I I talk so much. The 
40 some characters isn't enough for me so i don't post much there excellent oh yeah and, and, and i'm sorry tammy go ahead i was just gonna say twitter i just don't get it neither do i, just, I you know i've tried it and yeah. every time i go it says too many characters well forget it then i'm not going to say anything right you, you guys remember pagers right of course yeah. I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it's basically yeah. an electronic pager. That's why they kept it down to 140 characters, yeah, uh, which is, it's like 240 now. So they, they've upped it uh, quite a bit. So I was going to, I was going to mention this to you online and I forgot about it. And I'll just, I'll just use uh, valuable showtime and tell you about it now. So when we finally made it to hidden, uh, hidden falls, and I keep wanting to call it hidden Valley. Uh, when I finally made it to hidden, uh, hidden falls, I walked up there with a, a Jeep talk show sticker to the guy uh, at the office and I said do you guys do uh, stickers and he immediately went from uh, another person to yeah sure <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I gave him the sticker he goes oh Jeep talk show and and uh, we were expecting you and I said oh great and then this this nice uh, young lady uh, came over to the window and started talking to me and because I'm so damn socially retarded uh, I didn't uh, get names of anybody but she actually asked me if I was going to be going to uh, the event that you were having and I said, well, I barely made it here, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would be Carrie. Carrie, okay. Um, and, yes, yeah, she's going to be there with the Hidden, uh, the hidden Falls uh, tent, and she's going to have her Jeep re uh, recluses there. And they're giving away uh, a six-month uh, season pass to uh, oh, wow. Hidden Falls. Yeah. And I, I, guess you've been to hidden, deal. I guess you've been to Hidden Falls a few times? No, because my, I haven't got my Jeeps done. I've been so busy with everything else. Oh my god! Down here, and you know what? And honestly, we have uh, we've always worked on our own jeeps. Um, we've I've never let anybody touch our jeep. Oh, you know, this does her own. I do mine. For the first time, I am actually breaking down because I just want to get back on the trails, and I am taking it up to have the axles and everything done professionally for the first time in 20 years yeah i know the feeling uh i couldn't put my uh, my own arb uh, locker in so i don't i don't like other people touching my stuff but uh the the, the guy over at lone star uh, uh ring and pinion did a great job all right jason thank you very much i kept you way too long but a very interesting conversation we're gonna have to have you come back and uh, please anytime that you guys have anything going on uh, we have a voicemail line that you can uh, call in and uh, share that uh, event information with us and in, in your own voice and uh, hear it here on the show. So uh, please keep us in mind for anything that's happening. And uh, we're going to have to get together. I, I got to find out uh, what my uh, my problem is driving long distances in my Jeep. And once I do that, we can uh, hit the trails together. I, I would so much enjoy that. I'm, I'm ready to hit the trails around here and see what's uh What's all this Texas rock is about? Hidden Falls exactly. was absolutely beautiful, and uh, I, I, I want to go back. I just uh, <laughs> I can't get there any faster than fifty-five miles an hour. <laughs> well, that you know what? Honestly, my Jeep can only do sixty, so and that's I'm winded out in gears. So sixty miles an hour is my max. Yeah, well, they honk at you on the major freeways when the the speed limit is seventy-five and you're doing twenty under. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I just sit there and laugh and wave. Hey, how you doing? Right. I'm from exactly. Pennsylvania. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll need to have you back on very soon. Definitely. Right, thank, thank you, guys. You. Hey, big thanks again to Jason for taking the time to talk about Planet JP and hashtag Savannah Strong Alliance. Man, they're doing some great things over there. And man, the event that he's got coming up sounds really, really cool. Hope one of you guys out there are at least well, one of some of you, all of you guys out there are planning on going. So I don't know if you guys are aware aware of it or not, but there's a big Jeep presence in Australia. Interesting. I think I never I would have that. guessed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was contacted by uh, Ben Davidson. He's the editor of Jeep Action Magazine, and you know that they've had that magazine uh, published in Australia for the last 15 years. Wow, oh, Lord! Yep, yep, and uh, they're big time uh, listeners of the Jeep Talk Show, and uh, they're uh, they're loving us down there, even though we got this uh, strange way of talking. So next <laughs> week, <laughs> Ben Davidson, uh, again editor of uh, Jeep Action Magazine, is going to be joining us for our guest interview. I'm way excited, cool! Looking forward to that one. He's going to have that really cool Australian accent like Dan Greck, right? Set, oh, set, settle down. Tammy. Settle down. The knees are just going to melt. I, I know. <laughs> Why don't you just well, order you the got... magazine now instead of uh, doing it uh, next Wait, week during there, the interview? There's no, there's no accent. <laughs> there's no accent in the magazine, though, you know. <laughs>
Well, hey, do you guys have an idea for a guest? Maybe you want to be a guest on the Jeep Talk Show. Well, we'd love to have you. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and share your idea for our next great guest. It could be you. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, got a few comments about a farm and raise a Jeep that had the air bottle come loose and went through the back window. Uh, I get broken glass on my Jeep all the time from the inside out. Uh, not caused by loose items. It's mostly the passengers trying to escape. <laughs> but, uh, that's not what I called to talk about today. I called to talk about today is Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh oh. You keep mentioning whale songs. It's almost as if you're daring somebody to call in <laughs> and leave a 20 minute message of whale songs. Please. Who would no. even do that? I don't know anybody insane enough to do that. <sighs> or do you? <laughs> and that was 20 minutes of whale songs but tony edited it down to three minutes <laughs> all right gentlemen and girls i will chat you later and you have a good one you yeah. bye you know i'm just thinking uh we probably should sue pixar because they use that in uh their oh, movie that's <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, and Ellen DeGeneres, we need to uh, sue her as well because she's the one that performed it. It was done first right here on the show. You must have needed this every day. I need it! It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff. Pick of the week for your Jeep. If you're planning on tackling rough terrain without a winch, then there's one thing that you should have in the back of your Jeep, and that's a come-along. A come-along or a hand winch is what they're sometimes called. It's comprised of a body arm and a lever arm. And a a latch on the lever arm of the come-along advances the spool in the middle to coil the wire rope on the attached spool. Now, with careful planning and use, you can pull just about any stuck vehicle out of just about nearly any situation with careful application of a lever and a couple of pulleys. Now, wrapping a toe strap around a solid tree, let the line out and just go to town. Start cranking on this thing. While cheaply made examples can be had for $20 at stores like Harbor Freight or Northern Tool, you want to do yourself a favor and shell out for a quality model. These will cost much less than a winch, but is a drop in the bucket when compared to being stuck, stuck, or stranded. Now, my recommendation is the, the Mazdam PowerPole 144SB-6. Now, it's built like a freaking tank, and it has a two-ton capacity and will set you back $60 at the most and through Amazon and other retailers like that. We'll have a link, however, in the show notes for this episode where you can get one for yourself for about 40 bucks or less. Now, if a winch is too much for you right now, consider getting a come-along to tide you over in the meantime. Trust me, having one of these rattling around in the back is is much better than being stuck. I think even if you do have a winch, it's not bad to have one of these. Maybe that's what I should get. Tammy, I would recommend, I mean, you now you've got some recovery gear, you're set up, you always wheel with other people and you wheel in groups primarily. So, you know, you're kind of in good hands. This one may not be for you, but somebody who's not a member of a Jeep club might have to drive a long ways to go to a wheel, you know, to, to, to wheel, or maybe they frequently even wheel by themselves. Well, this would be a must have item for any one of those individuals as they won't have access to somebody with a winch. Maybe they're too far away to make that call to have somebody come out or maybe they just don't know anybody else uh, and are wheeling alone and, well, it might occasionally need a little bit of recovery. And you can't do that just with a, you know, a, toe, a toe strap and, uh, and a couple buddies. You know, it ain't, ain't going to happen. So this basically acts like it's a manual winch, essentially a hand winch is what they sometimes call them. You just lever this thing back and forth and, and it has the pulleys inside of it and, and it just it is able to produce a lot of power by hand without any electricity or anything else now tammy you have a winch bumper and this might be uh, make a good for a good clever uh video for your (laughs) youtube channel you could uh, get some bungee cords and actually mount this up on your winch bumper well (laughs) i knew my new winch (laughs) yeah now there are there are versions of these that have a a strap i would stay i would say stay away from those you want one that has a cable in it um and and at, at the very least a two-ton rating 
uh, if not more. Now, this is the bare minimum of what I would recommend. These things are built very well. Um, yes, you you know you 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 don't want to be pulling out a um, a full sized you know F three fifty that's up to its axles in in muddy sand uh, with one of these. Um, but there are versions out there that can do that sort of of heavy lifting or, or heavy pulling. Um, just get one that uh, you know is adequate to to your Jeep size or to the kind of vehicle that you have, um, or you know use the link that we'll have and get this one. Yeah, and be careful because you will snap this cable just like you will on any winch uh, when it goes over over its rating. So. Good point, Tony. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, this this definitely gets you into harm's way. But you know, when you're when you're stuck and you got to get out, and it's a matter of you know life or death, or getting back to civilization, uh, you got to do what you got to do. And yeah. uh, and and getting close to the action with one of these, well, hey, it's going to get you out of that hole, but it's also going to get you home. Don't uh, don't hang this uh, hang your jeep from a tree to give it a, a good scrubbing uh, underneath <laughs> for this Lord. thing is what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But these things are an invaluable tool. And if you need one, well, just hop over to the show notes for this episode at jeeptalkshow.com. We will have a link in those show notes and you can get one for yourself. And coming up in a few minutes, we're going to hear a little about some events that are happening in your hometown and around the nation in Wheeling Ware. Is it just me or is my Jeep smell hot? <laughs> Oh, please. <laughs> well, uh, much like both of your no. guys' Jeeps, mine is finally running and driving again. No. And, uh, and Seriously? Three? Yes. Three damn years. I mean, you <laughs> couldn't, you couldn't wait six more so you could say nine years. Nine <laughs> oh, man. It has been I quite an ordeal. That. that doesn't make any sense. Three years, it's impossible. You'd think. You'd think, uh, but there it is. Um, wow. And it, it all. And I'll tell you what. Trying to get it legalized again, going through inspection, emissions, and and uh, going through smog tests and all that sort of stuff. It's easier I, to get I, marijuana I, legalized. <laughs> I all. Um, I no. I lost faith for a minute there because I, I went into the DEQ on Monday. They were closed. I was like, okay, all right, fine, whatever. Went in on Tuesday. All right, here's a test of the vehicle for smog. Uh, I don't have my renewal notice. It's been like two years. Uh, the Jeep's been garaged for like three. Um, you know, I just need to get a smog test done really quick. Okay, lane five. Here you go. So I pull in, and um, the attendant there is just like, you know, let me scan your barcode or your, your VIN really quick, and let's get you up to the machine. All right, let's, you know, hook up the cable. Huh, that's weird. Not reading it. All right, jiggle the cable around a little bit. That's... Still not really reading it. That's. Do you, do you have a fuse out? No, I'm pretty sure I don't. Anyways, do you, you want to check? Because because I can't Please. do anything here for you with this. Please, like, just, you're like just banging your it. head on the wall. <laughs> I'm, all right, you know, and she's like, you can't do it here. You gotta, you know, pull it out. All right, so out of parking lot I go, and I'm like, I'm like, there's not a dedicated fuse for the ECU. You know, uh, it, it's not like one fuse that's out. So I'm, I, I don't have my test light with me. <laughs> I, I can't go through the fuses. I open up the fuse block uh, in the in the kick panel, and I'm looking. Okay, there's one spot that doesn't have a fuse. I'll just shove one in there really quick. Okay, what else could it be? All right, I'll take my chip out. You know, I, I've got a performance chip in there. Maybe maybe that's causing some sort of a, a disconnect to the power to the OBD2 port. I don't know. I'm reaching for straws here. All right, pull <laughs> pull the pull the chip out. Get the extra fuse in there. Let's try it again. Back into the line I go. Back into the into the queue. Into the DMV, I, or into the DEQ, I go, and they hook it up again. Nope, sorry, no power. You got to be shit. All right, fine. Th by, by that time, they're closing. I got to go back home. Go back home, and I'm, I'm like looking through this. I'm like, why isn't the OBD2 getting power? I go through, I get out my test light, grab my multimeter. I'm going through everything. And I'm like, okay, I, this isn't like a no bus issue because I'm still getting connectivity. I'm just not getting power to the port. So I know that the OBD2 system is working. It's just the, the port itself doesn't have power. Okay, why doesn't it have the port have power? Where does it get power from? Which pin is power? So I start looking at pinout diagrams and stuff. I'm going through electrical diagrams, looking at the wiring schematics and all this other sort of stuff. Realize that pin 16 is supposed to have power. Pin 4 and 5 are supposed to be ground, and pin 6 and 7 are the data bus transmission uh, wires. 
Okay, let's start testing these wires. Okay, I've got power over here. What's this? No ground. All right, where does pin four and five get their ground from? So more research and more research and more research. Find out. Okay, these two wires for the OBD2 system on the 4-liter uh, motors between 97 and 2001 get their ground from a, uh, from a stud right below the dipstick on the side of the engine block. Well, wouldn't you know it? I was just over there recently. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what a that's Oopsie. one hell of a good ink and ink. <laughs> wow, well, let's go and we'll take a little gander over I here. I was Holy just crap. there. I don't know why Wouldn't I didn't notice know that. <laughs> that stud does not have any wires on it. Well, where did they go? So looking through, and it, the wires had gotten tucked up underneath a couple of other wire looms and stuff. I must have missed it when I was putting everything back. Get those ground wires on. Get that all snug down. Went ahead and tested the uh, the 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 two port, you know, the the two pins on the OBD two, two port. Sure enough, there's power, there's ground. I've got everything I need. Back to the uh, DEQ, I go. Um, yesterday, or, uh, basically, it was today. Uh, yesterday, I went to the DEQ. Today, I went to the DMV. And several hundred dollars later, to Uncle Sam, the state of Oregon, I finally got the Jeep legal again. But I also had to file for a uh, a lost title because well, I have no idea where the title went. Jeez. So pain. quite an ordeal, quite an ordeal, but just, just in the nick of time because uh, this weekend I am meeting up with Oregon's uh, oldest sanctioned Jeep club oh, yeah. for uh, their annual back to basics run. And uh, so I'll be with the Jolly Jeepers this weekend and I'll be emceeing their event on Saturday. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to getting the Jeep out and whatnot. It drives great. Uh, I can definitely, definitely tell you this though. If you are going to have your Jeep garaged for months, years at a time, do yourself a favor and get the wheels off the ground. Get those tires up in the air. Get them off the Jeep, if nothing else. Had I just put my axles up on jack stands, got the Jeep a few inches in the air, and got those wheels off, got the, the tires off the ground, I would not have such a rough ride. I've got some nasty flat spots on those tires. Um, that, uh, it feels like everything's just way out of balance. So it's kind of, it was to be expected. The Jeep sat for very long. It didn't get moved around very much at all. Uh, and I think for about two years, it didn't even move. So it was just one of those things kind of, kind of was with the property. So, uh, I, I, I don't know this to be true, but I think it probably is when you were out there the first time at the, the DEQ, which is a, a weird name for a Dairy Queen. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that uh you i know that they heard you talking to your jeep is like damn it work i got 10 years in the automotive electronics industry <laughs> how dare you <laughs> well i was telling the gal I, I was like i'm pretty familiar with this i didn't go into, de into the details <laughs> as to why or anything do, you and didn't give her the, the never, line <laughs> never mind the giant jeep talk so deep jeep talk show sticker on the side of this I thing am? you think <laughs> Didn't even bother asking what's the talk show. You know, nothing oh, like that. So I would have gone uh, to another lane. <laughs> <laughs> How dare she? <laughs> uh, but it was it was a learning experience. It was like, well, yes, of course. You know, I I take three three years to rebuild a Jeep. I'm bound to, to forget something. And oh, if yeah. this is it all happens. it is, is one little ring terminal with a couple of wires out of it, well, then so be it. So, you know, you, you got to spend the 12 bucks. Go over to Amazon, get the little Bluetooth nub, get the free version of Torque, put it on your phone, and oh, that wouldn't have told me what I needed, though. I mean, this, no, but this you was... but you'd be able to test it uh, and know before you went out there that it was working. Uh, although I don't know oh, that you initially, yeah. initially oh, would right. expect that not to work, but you know, at least you could have some direct way of testing it. I mean, I, maybe you got an OBD2 uh, reader, I don't know, but uh, anything that would have been able to just oh yeah, now it's working. Uh, what the hell? Well, happened? I mean the. The DEQ is like less than a five minute drive from my house. I mean, the Jeep barely gets up the temperature as I'm pulling into the parking lot. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, it was one of these things where it's so close, it's convenient enough to where if I make a beeline after work, rush home, jump in the Jeep and make a beeline straight there, I can make it just in time before they close. Uh, and that's and that's what I did. So it, it wasn't like where I was, you know, way out of my way to go do this. And 
and take care of it. The biggest thing was just the troubleshooting behind the problem. Yeah, well, I mean, once you get in, the, in there, you don't, uh, to me anyway, you don't want to leave and have to go out in the parking lot and come back. I mean, if there's no waiting, it's well, no, no big and deal. They don't, but. they don't let you, like, I couldn't even remove the cover to my fuse panel inside of the DEQ, the Department of Environmental oh, the, Quality. These are, or these are TSA employees. <laughs> they might as well have yeah. been. I mean, after the cavity search, I was really... <laughs> 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 but only by request. Oh, gee. So, an awful so, lot to get tags for this thing. Jeez. So have you driven it to work yet? No, not yet. I just got tags today. I spent uh, an hour and a half of my lunch break. I uh, had to skip lunch and basically do this. I was really disappointed with the lack of food inside my local DMV. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I spent uh, time in there. And- <laughs> uh, oh, that and would got be the dangerous. For it. So, so I, I really, I, I've been driving it in my neighborhood, and obviously to the D, uh, the DEQ here, mm-hmm. um, close to me. Uh, that's been about the extent of it. I mean, the tags have been expired for a couple of years. Um, it's not something I really want to get pulled over and and get a nice fat ticket for. Uh, so I just, you know, plan it safe. So uh, I, I know some people out there know the answer to this question. I don't. I don't think Tammy does either. What does DEQ stand for? Department of Environmental Quality. Oh, God. They're probably called oh, smog stations God. where you guys are from we or something. We but, don't have uh, none of that crap. No. This is really? Texas. This is Texas, yeah. man. No. <laughs> now, if I have a 1965 or older vehicle or if I'm registered outside of city limits, then I don't have to go through all this crap and I can just do it online. We, so uh, Actually, we yeah. have the emissions control for you go... And every couple years, I think, I don't know, you got to go, they hook your, where do you go? What, what is that place called? Um, I go to oil change place where they do the the DM. Yeah. The DMV. God, I don't know. It's Uh, no, we just go to to an oil change place or anybody that does state inspections and they, they plug it into the OBD two and, um, check brake lights and, uh, the information goes to the state and then you, uh, send in your money for your registration because it's uh, we only have one yeah. sticker now the I'll mba yeah that's that's new though the department of motor vehicles yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i can do that online so i only I, lucky you i just have to go to uh to get it inspected which is a pain well, in the ass all the people down in uh, california who also have to deal with the uh, all the uh, emissions bs i think uh, can probably feel my pain i i believe washington state uh, operates by the same sort of standards and whatnot they i know they have deq up there as well so uh, it's just one of those things you know you got the environmental groups they make you smog environment car. i mean this environmental stuff what, what the hell has environment ever done for us there's a lot of environment out there plenty to go around <laughs> <laughs> So I just wanted to, and this is not Jeep related or anything, but I just wanted to give a shout out to my nephew who's going to be a sophomore um, this fall. He was at a national wrestling tournament and he is a triple crown winner. He took first place in folk style, freestyle and Greco-Roman in the national tournament. And gay, they listen to me once in a while. Their dad makes them listen to the (laughs) Jeep talk show. And he loves listening to us when they're driving on family trips. So anyway, way to go, Mason. I mean, what an amazing, he was also outstanding wrestler of this tournament. Amazing accomplishment. Um, Way to go. And the other thing, I just wanted to let everyone know that I have unladylike language. Was this new to you? Because I I knew it. uh, I'm shocked. (laughs) Outraged. I had two comments within days of each other, one from my Hell's Revenge Scary Moments video. The video was good. It would have been better without the bad language. (laughs) Too bad it is not family friendly. And then the other video or the other comment was he gave me a thumbs down and it was on my Uari Daniel Trail video. I gave this a thumbs down due to the unladylike language, which was unnecessary and spoiled an otherwise good video. I mean no offense and wish you better luck in the future. <laughs> better Signed luck with your snowflake. language. <laughs> yeah. Better, um, like, luck, better luck with you keeping your mouth shut. I like that. <laughs> so anyway, I I just found those kind of funny. So yeah. anyway. These are people these are clearly people who have never been off camber. Right, exactly. Or on the top of a mountainside, getting ready to tumble off. No, these are people who have spent their entire life wrapped in bubble wrap. 
So let me ask you, you know, uh, well, a listener recently uh, shared a video with us. I know you guys have seen that black bear uh, uh, video where they oh went on God, the trail. Yes. All the and, switchbacks. Yeah. yeah. And the lady with the accent. I mean, would that video be as good without her just no. in utter no. and absolute no, panic? No, 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 You got plenty no. of room on this side. You got 10 feet me, on I'm this gonna side. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. <laughs> Let me yeah. out. <laughs> nah, just sit there. The, the, I love the, the driver, the the husband or whatever. He's just like, honey, nah, I got this. Honey, got this. Just, just sit. Honey, honey. <laughs> and and I, I feel like some of my videos would be pretty boring if you didn't hear me going, well, oh, my God. This is, oh, my God. Are you this sure? This is my point. Sure? It, it is because it, any success that you're having with the videos is because people enjoy what they are seeing and hearing. So, why would you mess with success? I mean, right. I, I mean, like if you have people's pain, yeah, if you have a moral uh, obligation or you feel like you have a moral obligation to clean up your act, that's fine. But if you don't and that's you, then that's who you should be. People right. do not have to watch those videos. No, and, we, we have, and an you know, you can mute it. An, <laughs> right. It's true. Now, we, we have an explicit rating for the show, even though we do our due diligence to try and keep it yeah. as PG-13 as we can. You know, we try and make it family friendly, but, you know, those S-bombs occasionally get out there. And, and occasionally there might be some innuendos and some adult content that is talked about a little bit here and there. But whatever. You know, we, we do a decent job and we know that not everybody can be pleased all the time. And yeah. uh, But come on, wheeling videos off camber. You're talking about on the cliff side. One wrong move, and it's instantly between life and death. We're talking about putting yourself in harm's way, and somebody has a problem with the language behind it. Oh, come on. Well, the life and death wasn't what Tammy was doing. That was just like, you know, a three foot drop, but it's. Fine. I know. She was in her driveway <laughs> going off the curb, but I still. <laughs> That stuff can be scary yeah. as oh, beep. Oh, no. It is scary. You know, uh, I recently uh, got the, finally got the Jeep off-road uh, this past weekend, and uh, I, I was looking at uh, uh, some of the pictures my wife uh, took, and uh, she was taking a picture when I was getting ready to go down this very steep decline, and I was like, I told her, I said, don't don't angle the camera. Make sure that it's you know straight on. I didn't want that exaggeration, or I didn't want to lose how steep that was. And then I got home a couple of days later. Uh, got the pictures. Was looking at it on my uh, on my uh, <laughs> my computer, and it looks like I'm going a down going a down ramp at a parking garage. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing. Yep. No but, pictures but never do it, it justice. Yeah, but sitting in it, it's like holy hell! Look, this thing. I mean, yeah. it was a good 600 feet, and it went down a long ways. And it's just yeah. all what you're used to. And uh, it, if it had been a parking garage, yeah, who cares? Let me see if I can do 100. But because it's a, a different environment, you know, you, you wonder about that. Anyway, I did want to take a moment to uh, thank uh, Sean. Uh, Sean uh, was the, uh, the only person that was able to hang with my changes. You know, I had a problem uh, on, uh, on Friday night. I found a, a bad U-joint uh, on the uh, driver's side axle that I was going to have to replace, and I changed that uh, Saturday, which was the original date for the uh, Jeep Talk Show Texas uh, event at uh, uh, Hidden Falls. And uh, so he hung with me, and he went out there on uh, Sunday. And as you heard, I had some issues with the engine overheating, and uh, I, I believe it caused the thermostat to fail. So uh, he came over there. I mean, I was right at the park. Uh, I was actually going past the park so I could go get gas uh, in uh, Marble Falls. And uh, he was waiting there at the entrance, so he came over there and uh, was, uh, you know, trying to uh, moral support type stuff. But, but he had water, he had uh, antifreeze, he had uh, tools, he had all this stuff. And as we were trying to uh, wait for the engine to cool down and put uh, water in it, uh, as much as what water he had, um, it was just doing some weird stuff and I, stuff I had never seen the engine do before in my life. What well, turned out to be a bad thermostat. But I was certain that I had run that engine too long. Uh, I have I, I did what is now called doing a Josh and was going to have to pull the head off and have all the head work done. <laughs> uh, serious, Josh. I thought about that. I went, damn, this is the same thing that happened to Josh it ha has happened to me because I've never seen it do this before. He just mm -hmm. wouldn't stop spitting out coolant. Yeah. So anyway, he hung with me, and uh, we, we finally uh, managed to get it into uh, Marlboro Falls uh, at an HEB parking lot, and uh, my wife went in to, uh, uh, to get some more uh, bottled water, and uh, we were thinking about the symptoms, and uh, Sean says, I wonder if you could have a bad thermostat. And I said, well, I don't have, I've never had a thermostat go bad on me. I don't know. 
So uh, he says, well, we can change it and see. And I'd already called AAA. And oh, oh, by the way, if if you're over the 100 mile limit, it's seven dollars a mile. Oh, wow. That's ridiculous. So at, uh, at 190 miles, it was going to cost me yeah, $600 no. to have that. my Jeep towed home. So anyway, uh, since uh, Sean lives in San Antonio and it was only 88 miles away, we were just going to have it taken there where we could work on it. How I was going to get home, how I was going to get my Jeep home, didn't know. So, uh, I mean, this is a major, major thing. So after about four hours of worrying and what to do, what could it be, uh, we went over to uh, we went over to uh, a local auto parts place that he that Sean looked up on his phone, got a thermostat, got some RTV, uh, and while I was trying to call my wife out of HEB to bring the water because we were gonna we wanted to try this thing. I mean, as soon as we took it off and I could see how that that uh, thermostat looked, I knew that must be the problem. So uh, I'm trying to call her on the phone and the cell service isn't good or something. And anyway, by the time uh, I was uh, fo- focusing back on the thermostat, it was changed. Sean had oh, already geez. Sean had already <laughs> taken it off and changed it. And uh, Go, Sean. Yeah, he carries, uh, he had this little uh, battery-powered um, uh, ratchet uh, yep. thing, you know, and uh, he had that thing off and uh, he was going to let the RTV set. And I said, screw it. I'm not going to keep that thermostat in there because it doesn't even have a hole in it. I'm going to get one of the 10,000 of them I have here at the house. So I uh, slapped it on there, put some water in it. Perfect. No problem. Ain't that something. So I'm looking at my watch and I go, you know, it's uh, the park closes at three. It's uh, about 150 or so, 130 Jeez. or so. I said, <laughs> I came a long way. I got to at least get it out there and get some pictures. So uh, I said, you know, you don't have to go. It's it's like now five hours from when this whole thing started because I made it there by nine, and uh, he goes no let's go, so uh, I love this guy. I, I can't tell you how um, and I tried to cut him loose several times because this is his day his day off right before he has to go back to work. Why you know this isn't his problem. This is my problem. And no, there was there was water. There was uh, uh, antifreeze. There was let me replace that part for you, sir. Uh, oh, uh, he gave me a set of uh, axles. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, so I now have another set of axles. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> you know, the axle shaft. Did, did he drive you home, too? Did he go, yeah. sir? <laughs> You've reached your destination, sir. Is in, in some, anything else I can do for you? In, in some third world countries, we would be married now. Uh, seriously <laughs> no this guy this guy went above and beyond oh, i i really so got much. i mean hats off man to sean for for i mean really embodying the jeep brotherhood well, spirit. that's what he said he goes i can't leave you here we're jeepers and yeah we, and you don't leave jeepers uh stranded right and i said i that's, understand that i appreciate that but i don't i'm certainly not going to demand anything like this because this is just this is too much I almost had to threaten to uh, to kick his ass so I could buy him some more antifreeze while we were getting the thermostat. <laughs> no, I got plenty at home. I got three of those things. Well, you're going to have a fourth. Go get one. <laughs> <laughs> so well, anyway, on behalf big, of on behalf of Tony, Sean, thank you for for stepping up and 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 helping take care of our co-host in his time of need, buddy. That that's just some amazing amazing service there, and and obviously you know going above and beyond doing a bunch of stuff you didn't have to yeah um but you know doing the right thing i would say yeah yeah certainly certainly the right thing and but not not uh not something that was needing to be done and oh my god it was so nice after going through so much crap that entire day and and the 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 concern about the uh, overheating of the engine and then getting there and having that you know i got that long standing fear of having issues with the jeep overheating and it happened And to get all that stuff taken care of, go all through all that stuff, and then still be able to go out into this beautiful Texas uh, hill country and uh, get the Jeep off-road. I have never worked for anything so hard to to get something out there. It was great that I was able to get there. And and by the way, the office closes at 3, the park closes at 5. So we had plenty of time. time Yeah, Yeah. we had plenty of time to get out there and roll around and and, and have some fun. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that about Sean. Don't want to gloss over that because I don't think you find that many people out there. uh, There's there's people that I know really well that wouldn't spend that much time with me. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, they know you. And, 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 and I was just going to say, maybe that's why he was just getting to know me, and now he, he wouldn't do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you guys want to join in on the Campfire Side Chat? It's a lot of fun. Just go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find all the ways you can reach out to us and join in. Hey, let's talk about some events that are coming up in your neck of the woods and around the nation. We have uh, the Muddy Buddy Jeep Jam happening August 17th through the 19th at the Clinton County Fairgrounds in Wilmington, Ohio. Uh, we have Ocean City Jeep Week happening August 23rd through 26th, and that's going to be at the May Sport Complex in Pittsville, Maryland. Uh, the annual Great Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion is happening happening August 24th through the 25th at Lacanta Center Point uh, Center in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And the annual Sheriff's Jeep Fest and Crawl for the Kids happening August 30th through September 2nd, just off Highway 53 in Jasper, Georgia. Now we will have links to all of these events on the in the show notes. Uh, over at jeeptalkshow.com i just look for episode 342 and you can find out uh, well click on any of the links for any of those uh, any of those events and you guys can find out all the information about them really cool and really good stuff happening of course i had that sheriff's uh, jeep fest really good uh, cause behind that one uh they do a lot of stuff for for the kids in uh, in their area so uh, check them out and see if we could, what you can do to support them Hey, note of an off-road event coming up. Shoot us an email with some details. Have you been to a Jeep event recently? We'd love to hear from you. Just go to our contact page at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and let us know how it went. Hey, folks, and don't forget to check out my award-winning blog at jeepmama.com. Full radio commercial production over at thevoiceofjosh.com. Check out my voiceover services. Reach me at josh at voiceofjosh.com. That's it for this week, guys. Until next week, be sure to follow a friend, like, subscribe, and above all else, be sure to tell a friend about the one and only Jeep Talk Show. So no matter where you are wheeling, if you pack it in, pack it out, and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. Remember to always tread lightly. Let's learn more about the Tread Lightly principles. Head over to www.treadlightly.org. Warning, the Jeep Talk Show and some of its contents are known to the state of California to cause cancer or other harmful health effects. Of course, we are known by other states to be totally awesome, so California can go kick rocks. Casting since 2010.